Welcome back to week five of our uh, six-month Bible reading here. And uh, this week you got very deep into the book of Numbers and discovered how it was that God was able to get rid of a generation in 40 years uh, because the Numbers ends with the census of the people who were in, um, who survived the wilderness and the only two from the other generation are Joshua and Caleb. And you discover some events that happen when the people show unfaithfulness. The one in particular uh, is the event where God sends snakes, poisonous snakes, into the camp to bite people. And the people, of course, come back and uh, repent, but uh, they have to have a means by which to be cured and Moses makes a bronze snake which is put up on a pole so if people are bit all they have to do is look at the snake. This symbol is reminiscent of the symbol we have for the medical profession. It's, it was an ancient symbol for healing and when Jesus talks about being lifted up on a tree or on a staff he is referring to that event so this idea of you have to look at that which is killing you to find to uh, find your salvation and also that uh, there's a the event where Moses hits the rock twice at Meribah to get water and allegedly that shows his unfaithfulness so he is allowed to see the promised land but does not get to enter it and where he dies when he dies God buries him somewhere where no one can find him so that uh, Moses grave does not become a shrine then we get into Deuteronomy, and this is Moses' farewell preaching series. He has to remind this new generation of what promises God has given to them. They were probably very young um, or weren't even born when they went into the wilderness. And this is the generation that has grown up without slavery, fully dependent upon God for the manna and the food every day, so Moses wants them to understand that what they see as their past is really their present because that promise of God's continues to each generation. So Moses wants to renew that covenant with the people, review it, renew it. And so everything we have learned in Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers now gets reviewed. And the people are to be reminded that they are God's people by following those Ten Commandments and God will be very faithful. And you have uh, in there also back in Numbers the, the great story of Balaam who is hired to curse the Israelites by a rival king but ends up four times blessing them and uh, even his donkey talks to him. In the Gospel of Mark we've been uh, going along at a fast pace and um, now that you've seen some of this stuff in the Torah, those first five books of the Old Testament, you're maybe starting to see some of these images over and over again as um, the idea of eating and that God looks at the heart, the inside. It's not what goes into the person, it's what's in the person that is so important. Um, and responsive. And um, all of these books talk about that relationship God wants with his people. And even in the Old Testament, God feels it feels like God is a person. That's because he wants relationship. And he warns the people not to go after those false gods, not to go after relationships with those false gods in that land. That's why he warns them, you know, get rid of all the idols. Uh, in, in most cases, get rid of the people because they're going to tempt you to follow other gods. And we get this cycle that shows up of apostasy, people turning away from God, God letting them get beat up, then the people crying out for deliverance and God giving them a deliverer. So keep looking for that cycle to continue. And now this next week, we'll pick up at Deuteronomy 25, finish up Deuteronomy. So continue to look for those themes of review and renewal. Um, and how Moses uh, kind of, it feels like he takes upon himself 
the sins of the people, but yet he can't complete going into the promised land. There's someone else later who will do that, that we've been talking about in the Gospels. Then you get into the great book of Joshua. Joshua takes over leadership. He is the new leadership that brings the people into that promised land. And uh, some of the uh, Bible stories you had in Sunday school, you might see a lot of good ones come out of Joshua. So uh, I invite you to see how it is that they go about conquering and taking possession of this promised land that God has. And uh, my one question for you is, um, look at what Joshua has the army do as they begin to prepare to uh, enter and take over this land that God has promised. Have a great fun reading, and we'll talk to you next week during Holy Week. Have fun. Good night.